Hey folks, Jamie here. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, I would like for you to take a moment and go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling generous, maybe share this video to your social media feeds. What that does is make it a lot easier for other people to find a moment of Tiki. I'd really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. Today I want to talk about Pufferfish, that iconic addition to any home tiki bar or professional tiki bar for that matter. Me personally, I don't have any in the Lagoon of Mystery. I have kept Pufferfish small freshwater and brackish water figure eight puffers for years in Aquaria and I have come to know them as an intelligent and inquisitive little fish with distinct personalities. Therefore, I'm not comfortable with them being used as decorations in tiki bars, uh, especially since there's no other commercial use for them. I mean, they're not harvested for food or anything like that. So I tend to avoid using puffer fish, although I don't cast any judgments on people who do. That said, they're really cool. And as Christmas is coming upon us and the other holidays, Hanukkah, Festivus, you know, Yule, uh, I started thinking, what can I do to incorporate some type of puffer fish ornament into my decor? And I came up with this. I've got puffer fish ornaments made from wood. Now I'm going to show you how I go about doing this. And what's more, I'm going to have some to give away just like last year because Tiki Bobs were really popular. I'm hoping these little guys are too. So hang around to the end of the video and I can tell you how you can get your very own puffer just like this for free. To make a puffer fish, first of all, we start with a two inch wooden ball. Simple enough, they're available in pretty much all hobby and craft stores. So the way I do this is first take a pencil and mark where the apex or the pole, north pole, of the sphere is. And this is where I'm going to drill a hole for the eye loop that's gonna be screwed in there to act as the uh, anchor for the hook for the ornament. Next, to guide me, I draw a line bisecting a longitudinal line bisecting this into top and or east and west hemispheres from the North Pole all the way down to the South Pole. And I try to get this as straight as possible. It doesn't, it's not super critical if it's perfect, but it helps. And once I have that divided, then I'm going to do the same thing. So it is divided into four quarters. And this, again, it's not super critical, but it's gonna help guide me the rest of the way with everything else that I'm doing. So there. The sphere, the wooden ball is now divided into four quarters. And the last thing I like to do before I really get started is just draw an equator Using the lines as reference, I first draw in the eyes and mouth using a pencil. From there, I mark the location of the spines, starting at the top of the fish. The first row goes in as a ring of six, forming a crown. Then I drop down and add another ring, with each new spine bisecting the space between the spines one row up. I continue this all the way down the fish. With the spine locations marked, I drill the holes. 
To ensure I only drill to a uniform depth of 1 8 of an inch, I use a piece of blue tape as a depth stop marker on my drill bit. Once the tape reaches the wood, I stop drilling. It's very low tech, but it works. Once all of the holes are drilled, I screw in the threaded eye hook. This is where the hook to hang the ornament on a Christmas tree, or wherever, will ultimately attach. But for now, it's an important way to hold the pufferfish as I construct the ornament. With the mouths and the spine holes carved, now we come to the point where we have to drill holes for their eyes. So this is a quarter inch drill bit with a brad point. You want the brad point so you can control where it goes in on the spherical object. And there we have it, the fish with eye holes. Now it's time for detail work and for that I need to use the Dremel. First off we're going to give this little guy a mouth. Now, once the mouth is in place, we have to cut the slits in the fish to insert the fins. Fortunately, the width of this uh, Dremel cutting burr is just about the size of the width of the basswood sheet that I'm using in cutting out the fins. So I will make a half inch slice as straight as possible, may not even an eighth of an inch deep. It's fairly shallow, doesn't need to be super deep. And there you have it. Insert one fin right there, and I'm going to repeat this for each side fin and for every other fish as well. To make the eye, which you can see right here, I'm going to use one quarter inch mushroom uh, wood furniture buttons. And as I've learned previously, painting them, because they're so small, is a challenge. So I've taken this little piece of pine and drilled out quarter inch holes to set the buttons in so they are stable while I paint them. For the fins, I have this slender piece of basswood. It's not terribly strong, but it doesn't have to be since it's not going to support weight. I have this circle stencil, and on here, I can get about three tail fins per width. And then each side from the middle, I'm going to measure about half an inch. I have all the fins cut out of the basswood, but they're kind of rough and not smooth like we would want. It's not in a finished state. There's a lot of fuzz on here from the saw. So what I'm going to do, I have my Dremel clamped to the sawhorse 
with a sanding wheel on it and I'm going to use it on a low speed to sand off and smooth the edges of these fins. Because this does kick up a lot of dust, I'm going to wear a mask. Now it's time for glue up. Taking the glue and applying it to the insert end of the fin. Not a whole lot, just enough to a good healthy amount on the back. And back of the fish, slip it in the slot set it in nice and deep and we are going to repeat for the two swim fins on the side setting it in and lo and behold it is starting to look like a fish with the fish finally all put together it's time to apply the base coat. I'm using a pale yellow. It's not the final coat. This is obviously base coat, as I say. And I'm just going to paint the whole thing this light, creamy yellow. Getting on the fins, everywhere. Now it is time to give the puffer fish some color. Since this is Christmas ornaments, I am doing red and green. And using the airbrush, I'm not really great at the airbrush, but it gives me some of the effect that I'm looking for. As you can see, I'm using this box as my makeshift spray booth. This is a fairly small, low powered airbrush, and so we don't have a whole lot of overspray, but I just wanna keep it all contained in one fine location. So without further ado, I'm going to kick this puppy into gear. Don't judge me too harshly on my airbrush technique, or more accurately, my lack of airbrush technique. Haven't had one very long and I'm still learning the ropes. And now we are adding the spikes to our puffer fish. Just a little dab of super glue. Could use wood glue, but super glue has a more narrow applicator. So getting it right there makes it much easier and there's a lot less spillover. Now we're making some real progress. It's time to put on the eyes. To do so, I'm taking the mushroom buttons that we used before and adding some wood glue to them uh, because the wood is hydroscopic. It will absorb water, uh, moisture from the wood glue, and it will expand once it is put into position and that'll help anchor the eye and make it more stable. Plus 
plus this is a really strong glue as well. So in all perfect worlds, these eyes will never even think about coming out. Now this is the moment you've been waiting for where I tell you how to get your very own Pufferfish for free. Yes, I'm giving a giveaway this year and the rules are the same as last year. If you're on YouTube, I am giving away this red pufferfish to YouTube subscribers to my video channel. All you have to do is one, like this video, two, subscribe to Amon Tiki, and three, leave a comment down below. That's what you do to enter here. And on December 25th, I will, at random, pick a winner and announce the winners within 72 hours. But that's not the only way to win. Over on my Instagram page, I will be giving away the green puffer. Free, absolutely free, to those who follow the instructions there, which will be posted. And I will be giving away a third puffer fish, because last year I gave away three Tiki Bobs. I will be giving away a third puffer fish on my Facebook page for a moment of Tiki. Now, because I didn't want it to be unbalanced with two green or two red in the giveaway, I made a super limited edition blue puffer fish, and that's going to be on Instagram. So I will have the links to all of them down below in the show notes. So if you want to have a chance to win three puffer fish, by all means, have at it. And here is wishing you and yours a happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Festivus, Mele Kalikimaka. Until next time from the Lagoon of Mystery, aloha. Aloha.